We see millions of people saved, but we also see them saved one by one. And I came into the Congo. We had a crusade there. And uh, uh, some of my brothers said, uh, there is a prison. You must go and have a, you must go and see it. You will never believe. It's as, it's as if it is medieval times. Uh, my crusade director said, I preached there a couple of times. Some of these prisoners uh, got saved. Please come along. I went. I entered the prison. I saw about 50 men uh, condemned to death with, with thick chains welded, welded to their wrists and welded to their ankles. They could just move very, very slowly in chains, ready to be executed, to be hanged. And when I entered the prison, they all sat on planks and one was leading the singing. And the song was, this is the day that the Lord has made. And they, they shook their, their chains in rhythm as Africans can do so well. This is the day that the Lord has made. It sounded eerie to me. I just sat down at the last, on the last plank. I watched the song lead up and suddenly the Holy Spirit spoke my heart. He said to me, tell the song leader he will be released and he will preach the gospel. I thought by myself, Lord, are you sure? The Lord said, I'm very sure. Tell him. He said, okay, I will obey. I called my, an interpreter. I said, I would like to speak to the song leader. They brought him. And I opened the conversation. I said, what is your name? He said, my name is Richard. I said, Richard, God spoke to me about you. You will be released from prison. And you will become a preacher of the gospel. I saw his face turning bloodless. He turned around. He looked over the wall, the prison wall. On the other side, the public side, was a huge tree. He said to me, can you see that huge tree? I said, yes. He said, once a month, the hangman comes from the capital, Kinshasa. We are all lined up outside at that tree. Then, the hangman throws a rope over one of the branches, puts the noose around the first neck and pulls him up, using the tree as a lever. And when he is dead, he puts, he, he lets him down, takes an axe to hack off his hands to retrieve the chains and the feet. And then number two gets the noose. And number three, and number four, he said, I already stood three times in the line to be hanged. And every time my turn came, the hangman said, oh, I'm tired today. I'll be back next month. He said, Preacher, next week is my turn. This time I will be the first in the line. What did you say? I said, I said nothing. Thus says the Lord. You will be released and you will preach the gospel. I prayed with him. I left, I preached, some more got saved. I left the prison, we had a glorious crusade. I was praying every day, Lord, have Richard released. Let your word be fulfilled. Let Richard be released. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, go to the governor and speak to the governor on behalf of Richard. I made an appointment, they accepted me, I went there. When I arrived, the governor wasn't there, only his wife. And they said to me, Madame will tell the governor what the great evangelist is to say. So there we sat, first was a small talk, and then I said, uh, Madame, I have a special request to make, and I want you to pass that on to your husband. I was in prison. God pointed a man out to me. His name is, he pulled, I pulled out his name, exact spelling. Uh, 
and said, this is the man God spoke to me about. He must be released because he will preach the gospel. She said, well, this cannot happen. After a while, she said, well, uh, we can talk about it. If you would pay for the education of our children in the United States of America, we might consider it. I said, Madame, first of all, I have no money. And secondly, I would never do that. Why was she offended? She jumped up. She was angry. She turned around. She walked on her way out. And I thought I had messed up everything from my children. Then, before she left, she turned around one more time. And I said, Madame, before you go, let me tell you one more time. God says, Richard must be released because he is to preach the gospel. She slammed the door and gone she was. And somehow in my mind, I thought, just my mind was thinking, that Richard is going to be number one. And next week, the was done and I went back home. Richard is released and he wants to go to Bible school. He wants to study for the ministry. I said, I pay for his education. For four years he went to the uh, seminary to study the word of God. And then I went back to Kinshasa for a gospel crusade. I just had preached to 350,000 people when my crusade director said to me, uh, Reinhardt, when you come down uh, to go back to the hotel, there is a surprise waiting for you. I came down, I saw there an African pastor was talking with some of my team brothers, including Peter Vandenberg. When he saw me, he came dashing forward, fell at my feet, kissed my shoes, grabbed my legs and held them I, he was weeping uncontrollably. I could believe this. I stooped down. I lifted him up. I said, Who are you? Why are you doing this? And I looked into the eyes. I said, Rachel, Rachel, is it me? Yes. It is me. It is me. God has done a miracle in my life. We were weeping together, rejoicing together. God is the fulfiller of His word. You know, when I was young, I went from promise to promise. Today I go from fulfilled to fulfilled. This book is full of such glorious happenings. It can only inspire the young generation to dare.